everyone. This is special. An extraordinary run by Bradford City. But they've tried to make today ordinary. A normal preparation, training yesterday. Players in just a couple of hours before kickoff, ready to perform tonight. Against Aston Villa in some peril in the Premier League, but finding comfort in a competition which has always been dear to their hearts from the moment they became the League Cup's first winner 52 years ago. Mason Zogby up beaten away by Duke. Maybe the first of many saves that we called upon to make tonight. Howard Webb is the referee. I'm sure you've noted him already. Well, he just plays the ball and gets it back from the thrower from Joe Bennett. Good strength, good upper body strength. Always wants to work that onto his left foot. And Bradford City allow him, and they need to learn the lesson of that. Looking for Bentake, there's no flag, and there's no goal either. Again, Jim makes an important save, and Bentake rules another opportunity. At least this one was on target. Well, another good save, but this is what worries me about Bradford. The movement and the pace is clearly on side. Gets the wrong side of McHugh, and he hits the target. It's on his weaker left side. Nevertheless, it's low. Goalkeeper needs to get down and make the save, and obliges. Corner. Low shot. The ball's given. For Wells. He was in the clear by the deflection. And they're doing it again, Bradford City. Their top scorer, the man with the instinct to find the back of the net. They don't complicate his game too much. They say keep running into those areas that bring you goals. And this will happen, and it's happened here in a capital one cup semi final. Well, oh, there is no offside. It's a brilliant decision by the assistant referee. There may have been a nudge by Curtis Good, but it takes a deflection. Falls absolutely wonderfully for Narky Wells. Deflection takes the pace off what would have been an innocuous shot that Shane Given would have dealt with. Leaves Wells. We said he'd get a chance. We said if he got a chance, he'd have to take his chance, and he has done just that. This country is West Yorkshire, so uh, maybe can sing as well. And here's uh, Nzogbia. We get Aston Villa back level, all his own work here. And again, Matthew gets his angles right. Well, it sounds like a broken record, but again, they give it away cheaply, but the broken record part is Charles Nzogbia wanting to go on the left foot, and he does it. Friday. Benteke. Oh. Premier League boot behind it, yeah. almost caught Duke out, of course played in the Premier League himself for Hull. Well, I think he's going to try and catch this, Matt Duke, and then he realises at the last minute it's probably coming a little bit quicker than he anticipated, so he makes the decision to palm it away, and I think it's a good decision. Certainly, uh, City getting the ball to Hines on a very regular basis as well. He's the former West Ham man with a good turn. And a very good shot too. And he scored against uh, Aston Villa from over there as well. Hanson could have scored again. I mean, it's a simple corner, isn't it? He gets the run on Kieran Clark. That's a bullet header. I think it's Fabian Delph that gets himself back in. Zogbia, who's run out of this good hit, real chance for Aston Villa to level it up, back by the hall, carried away by Matt Duke, the latest in this catalogue of Capital One Cup saves from the Bradford goalkeeper. Zogbia, as I said, does really, really well, as it falls for Agbon Lahore, first touch is good, the strike is good, and the goalkeeper's equal to it. I'm trying to get it down, we'll come here for Barry Bannon. This will close down quick enough, and this time Benteke, where well, you thought he must score that time. And Matt Duke somehow thwarted him again. Well, he's been heavily involved, the goalkeeper, as has the striker. But for me, this is the best save of the lot. Barry Bannon, fantastic ball, picks out the moving Benteke, and he heads it down. He makes it awkward for the goalkeeper, but they are wonderful reactions.
from Matt Duke. He gets across quickly, parries the ball away. Bannon. The wait for anyone outside him. Doesn't need to get the cross in. And from the hall, another save. He's trying to pounce on the rebound. Corner. Oh, there they are, Bonner Hall. A right smile. Thinks he scored there. And Zobia hits it, and Duke can't handle it this time. Oh! Well, the uh, follow-up by Darren Ben's chance. Uh, Standers was a real chance. Well, I think more the pain is mental for Darren Ben than physical. Keeps himself on side. First time, Matt Duke can't hold it. He has to score. He totally mistimes his jump, Darren Ben. He's on the way down as he heads that ball. It's a total... Missed time of a jump, and that has cost him. These corners really represent an opportunity. And that's Hanson. Thinking by Wells to get there. So he can be put in. And it is McCardle. And they've got a second goal. From the second ball back in. Rory McCardle, the busiest footballer in the land. And he can score goals. Well, you spoke of Manchester Rovers. Is this the moment that will allow Bradford City to become a real life Manchester Rovers? Because this is a fantastic ball in. It's shocking defending. It really is shocking defending. But he's got a free header and he meets it exactly as he'd want to. He gets full power on the header and redirects it on target. Shea given absolutely no chance and all of a sudden a two goal cushion that changes everything. And down goes Turgut, fouled by Delft, who's an aggressive midfield yeah. player, always makes him a yellow card candidate. Absolutely. Got uh, not Roy of the Rovers, we got Rory of the City. And oh, off the top of the bars, Hansen flung himself at that. Well, three defenders of Bradford City have got their hands on the head because they know what a big moment that could be. It's a great cross in. Again, he attacks it wonderfully. And that's his best header of the night, ironically. They were always going to need a little bit of good fortune to go there. And a very good goalkeeper. Yeah. And it isn't done yet because Duke might be beaten this time. And he is. Andy Vyman, who took one for his trouble. But at last the Villa fans have got something to cheer with eight minutes to go. Well, this could be the biggest goal of the night. It really, really could. That's how important I think it was. Another flick on from Benteke. And he gets in behind Vyman. And he stays calm as the ball comes down. He helps it over the advance in Duke. And he takes a painful one for his troubles. However, it's a pain worth having. It really is a pain worth having because, for me, he's just got his team right back into this time good work taking on two and getting the better of two and getting a corner This is met with such power. It's outrageous, really. But again, desire. He gets in front of Benteke that's marking him. He gets a full head on the ball. Benteke's nowhere. And Shea Given has got no chance. Delph, no chance on the line. That ball flew in, flew off McHugh's head like an absolute bullet. That is wonderful. And all of a sudden... We're dreaming again, Martin. We are dreaming again. And they have run the clock down as well as any team possibly could. And they have beaten Aston Villa. They take a 3-1 lead to Villa Park. Wonderful for Phil Parkinson's team, particularly for Karma Q, who scored the third when Villa looked like they were going to level it up, having got back to 2-1 through Andy Vyman. Matt Duke has been fantastic in this capital run, but I think this has been the game of his life. McCarl 
scored the second. Naki well scored very early in the evening to put Bradford onto the front foot. It has been epic, just like the run. It's all to do for Aston Villa. Brilliant for Bradford City. Job only half done though. Bradford City three, Aston Villa one.